get a few more coming in here. So today, uh, James chapter 5, verses 1 through thir- or one through 12. And I don't know why I, I, I got all wrapped up. For some reason, after last week, I thought I'd already taught this section. And I was talking to Clint. And uh, so I'd already studied for it. So then I started going on and studying the next part. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute. You haven't done 1 through 13 yet. So you know, I had to backtrack and, and, and redo my study on this. So let's uh, start out. We'll read James chapter 5, 1 through 12. Now listen, you rich people. Weep and wail because of the misery that is coming upon you. Your wealth has rotted. And moths have eaten your clothes. Your gold and silver are corroded. Their corrosion will testify against you and eat your flesh like fire. You have hoarded wealth in the last days. Look, the wages you failed to pay the workmen who mowed your fields are crying out against you. The cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord Almighty. You have lived on the earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have fattened yourselves in the day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered innocent, innocent men who were not opposing you. Be patient then, brothers, until the Lord's coming. See how the farmer waits for the land to yield its valuable crop and how patient he is for the autumn and spring rains. You too be patient and stand firm because the Lord's coming is near. Don't grumble against each other, uh, brothers, or you will be judged. The judge is standing at the door. Brothers, as an example of patience in the face of suffering, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. As you know, we consider blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of Job's perseverance and have seen what the Lord finally brought about. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Above all, my brothers, do not swear, not by heaven or by earth or by anything else. Let your yes be yes and your no, no, or you will be condemned. (coughs) So... Um, I don't know, I don't have the same illustrations uh, as I did last week. However, however, I have, I, I'm going to sing for you. So, I will sing the first part, and then you sing the next word. So, this is really tricky. You might not know the song. It's, uh, let's see, it's probably more from uh, me and Clint's era than it would be anyone else, but, uh, Okay. Money, money, money. There you go. Very good. Very good. The lyrics were really hard on this song. And uh, this, is, this is ABBA from, uh, I don't even know what year, but some people, have, some people got to have it. Let's see. Let me, oh, wrong one. Um, I work all night. I work all day to pay the bills I have to pay. Ain't it sad? And still, there never seems to be a single penny left for me. That's too bad. In my dreams, I have a plan. If I got me a wealthy man, I wouldn't have to work at all. I'd fool around and have a ball. Money, money, money. Must be funny in the rich man's world. Money, money, money. Always sunny in the rich man's world. Aha. All the things I could do if I had money, it's a rich man's world. It's a rich man's world. A man like that is hard to find. But I can't get him off my mind. Ain't it sad? And if he happens to be free, I bet he wouldn't fancy me. That's too bad. So I must leave. I'll have to go to Las Vegas or Monaco. And win a fortune in a game, my life will never be the same. Money, money, must be funny in the rich man's world. Money, money, always sunny in the rich man's world. Aha, all the things I could do if I had a little money in a rich man's world. Money, money, money. Must be funny in the rich man's world. Money, 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 always sunny in the rich man's world. Uh Uh-huh. All the things I could do if I had a little money in a rich man's world. So there's Abba's take on, uh, (laughs) I think it was called money. So, you know, I mean, so the one that, the one that is a little more contemporary than that one, really not a whole lot more, still more me, Clint, Kara, and Ed and Ajos, um, so, so again, this is this is going to be hard, but I'm going to need you. Oh, Dana's here. So Dana's he knows, between he and Clint, we're going to know all the words. All right. So, all right. Money, money, money. Money. There you go. There you go. 
I'm not going to do it all. It's five times it does that. So some people got to have it. Some people really need it. Listen to me, y'all. Do things, do things, do bad things with it. You want to do things, do things, do things, good things with it. Talk about cash, money, money. Talk about cash, money, dollar bills, y'all. For the love of money, people will steal from their mother. For the love of money, people will rob their own brother. For the love of money, people can't even walk the street because they never know who in the world they're going to beat. For that lean, mean, green, almighty dollar money. For the love of money, people will lie. Lord, they cheat for the love of money. People don't care who they hurt or beat for the love of money. A woman will sell her precious body for a small piece of paper. It carries a lot of weight. Call it lean, mean, green, almighty dollar. I know money is the root of all evil, which it's a root of all kinds of evil. Uh, do funny things to some people. Give me a nickel, brother. Can I spare a dime? Money can drive people out of their minds. Got to have it. I really need it. How many things I have heard you say. Some people need it. Some people really need it. How many things have I heard you say? Got to have it. I really need it. How many things have I heard you say? Lay down, lay down. A woman will lay down for the love of money. All for the love of money. Don't let, don't let, don't let money rule for the love of money. Money can change people sometimes. Don't let, don't let, don't let money fool you. Money can fool people sometimes. People don't let money, don't let money change you. It will keep on changing, changing up your mind. Actually, as I looked at these songs, I was like, wow, they actually had a little bit of a message to them. So I was kind of surprised. So um, here in, in, the, in the chapter, though, um, it seems like, you know, he's taught the, the, the uh, the book is to Christians. So if the book is to Christians, what do you think, what do you think these first verses, um, who are the rich people? Rich worldly or rich Christian? Yeah, so, um, so, and this is not necessarily, I mean, today it would be like, uh, and, and maybe there are some, too. I mean, there, it could have been slave master situations, could have been em employer, employee situations. Um, I had a thought there, and I just lost it. Um, <clears throat> one, one that comes to mind is Boaz. So remember how uh, Boaz, I, I, so many people I, I look forward to seeing in heaven. Boaz is one. He just seems like such a gracious man. Um, and... You know, the way that he wants to make sure and take care of Ruth. Now, no doubt she was a young, beautiful woman. I, I get that um, more than likely anyway. And, and he's, he just wants to make sure she's taken care of. He knows that she's Naomi's uh, daughter-in-law. And he takes care of that. You know, it was the thing to do anyway to make sure you don't pick up everything. It was their, their type of uh, social security, if you will. And he makes sure that Ruth is taken care of. So uh, I would say that Boaz, wealthy, but wouldn't have been one of these type people that would have had to be, had to been chastised. Can you think of other biblical examples, one way or the other, that might fit into this or would be the polar opposite of this? Just, just give me an example. Wow, do, do we, do you, we have a coffee bar. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that was fairly costly. Not just the tomb, but the spices and everything to do the embalming. Um, some cross-references to go. Oh, so, so uh, over the years, you know, some some phrases, I, I, I can't even remember if I heard this from a preacher or for some business thing, but uh, money is relative. The more money you have, the more relative you have. <laughs> and uh, he died. You know, we've all heard this one, he who dies with the most toys wins. And, and uh, years ago when I was, oh, like in my 20s, I remember there being a sign or a, a poster, a really nice poster, beautiful house, and like a, oh my goodness, it must have been like a six or eight bay garage. 
And in the garage was like Ferrari, Lamborghini, Porsche, you know, Bentley or Rolls or whatever. And it, and it, the, the phrase under it was uh, um, something like, it was catchy and I'm not going to be able to make it that way. So it was uh, something about uh, rewards of higher learning or something like that, you know. And uh, so I think it kind of fits into the who, he who dies with the most toys wins, right? And, and obviously we know the answer is he who dies with the most toys still dies, right? So 1 Timothy 6, 6 through 10 says, But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing to the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content. Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and trap in, in, and a trap, and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. Um, can you think of a few people that... I, the one that I, I think of one right off the bat, how about uh, Elisha's servant? Remember Elisha's servant? What happened in that situation? Remember Naaman comes over and he needs to be healed because he has leprosy. In fact, uh, Jesus even uses him as an illustration uh, in his preaching. Uh, so Naaman comes and... He goes, dips in the Jordan seven times. First, he wasn't going to do it because it didn't sound cool enough for him. But finally, he says, hey, I'll go do it because a servant says you should do this. He does it. He gets cleansed. He comes back, and he wants to give Elisha something. And uh, Elisha doesn't want to take anything. And uh, Gehazi. So he's, uh, Naaman's taken off back to Samaria. And Gehazi catches up with him and says, oh, you know what? Actually, after all. We could use, you know, some uh, Pierre Cardin suits and, you know, some Tommy Hilfiger shoes and whatever, right? And so he gets that stuff, and then the leprosy goes to Gehazi because he, uh, you know, had bad intentions. So that's one. Any other ones you can think of? Yeah. Aiken? Oh, yeah, great one, you know. Uh, that's the only problem. Anytime you ever... You, you know, every time you cross reference or think anything, then you start looking into that, and it, it can be this rabbit chase. A lot is another good example. Ephesians 6, 9 says, Masters, uh, do the same to them and stop your threatening, knowing that he, God, is both their master and yours, is in heaven, and that there is no partiality with him. Let's, I, w I do want to read uh, Deuteronomy chapter 24. It's, it wasn't in the notes, but... It was one that uh, I found looking into this. <clears throat> Deuteronomy 24, 14, and 15. So this is the premise behind James's. No doubt James was, was familiar with this. Do not take advantage of a hired man who is poor and needy, whether he is a brother Israelite or an alien living in one of your towns. Pay him his wages each day before sunset. Because he is poor and is counting on it. <clears throat> Otherwise, he may cry to the Lord against you, and you will be guilty of sin. So, backdrop for those verses in James. Again, I already mentioned the, the generosity of, of uh, Boaz to Ruth and Naomi. Matthew 6, one of the, pr probably one of my favorite passages. I love the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, there were so many references to, to uh, James and his familiarity with the Sermon on the Mount. I, I just, it's going to be interesting to hear uh, what things Jesus talked about around the house, you know, uh, because James likely is the oldest brother right under Jesus. And, you know, I'm, I'm just curious as to what things uh, Jesus talked about to his younger brother. But here in Matthew 6, 19 to 21, which it, the whole context goes right on through, I think, 34. And of course, you got 33 in there, seek first the kingdom of God. Uh, but in 19, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moths and vermin destroy 
and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So uh, I was listening to, um, if you know me, my favorite book of the Bible is Genesis, bar none. So um, I was listening, there's a guy that's, uh, he has 73 lessons, 63 or 73 lessons on Genesis. I've heard them all at least 20 times. And I think I've been saying that for about five or 10 years. But so now it's probably up to about 30 times a piece. So I've been going through the whole series again and what was the only thing, what was the only piece of property that, that Abraham owned on this earth? I mean, he's going to, and his, his people will inherit the promised land, Palestine, right? But what was the only piece of property he purchased? Yeah, he, he bought the cave at Machpelah from uh, Ephron, I think, the Hittite. I uh, can't remember how much silver they weighed it out. You know, there's a little haggling that goes a little on there. And it's interesting that the only piece of property he buys is a place to bury his wife and to eventually be buried himself at, I think, 175. So um, anyway, when you talk about a man that, I mean, if, if you're going to inherit all that, why not, why, not, uh, why not buy property there? Why not, uh, you know, why not have Abraham Central or Abraham Bookbinding, Abraham, you know, uh, Israeli, Israeli uh, burgers. You know, whatever. You know, sorry, man, I was just all so went totally blanked on my illustrations there, but yes. How what? Yes, yes, thank you. I've had plenty. Four o'clock this morning, my shoulder says, hey, I don't feel good. So icing this morning um, may have thrown me off. Uh, Proverbs 23, 4 and 5. Do not wear yourself out. To, do not wear yourself out to get to get rich. Do not trust your own cleverness. Cast but a glance at riches and they are gone, for they will surely sprout wings and fly off to the sky like an eagle, especially if you have inflation, right? Proverbs 28, 11, the rich are wise in their own eyes. One who is poor and discerning sees how deluded they are. So it's not just a poor person that sees that, but it's the one that, that's poor and discerning. But a rich and discerning person, I would think, would see that too. Leviticus 19, 13, do not defraud or rob your neighbor. Do not hold back wages of a hired worker overnight, which we already talked about. Uh, another one that I saw was Proverbs 3, 27. Do not withhold good from those to whom it is due when it is in your power to act. So a question that I've, uh, so over the years, uh, I think I, I've mentioned this before, uh, doing my job. You know, I've had the radio playing or listen to podcasts, and I've listened to, uh, you know, Dobson and Family Life Today and, and numerous others that would come on the radio. I just listen to just, I love hearing other people's perspectives. And, <clears throat> you know, one of the things, and, and it might even be in, I don't know if Dave Ramsey talks about this or not, but, uh, you know, when you have unexpected money coming into your possession, do you just always assume it's yours? Would you just sit on that for a minute? Unexpected money comes to you. Do you just assume it's yours? Well, it came into my bank account. It, came, it was a check with my name on it. Have you ever thought to say, Lord, do you have a place for this to go? Did, 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 I, did I miss something? Does someone need this? I mean, now granted, you may be the one that needs it. Um. Now, man, I think of Barnabas, you know, sells the property. He gives it all. He didn't have to give it all, but he did nonetheless. Is being rich a sin? We know from the scriptures that being rich in itself is not a sin. Sometimes God chooses to bless certain believers with great riches. We talked about Abraham. Uh, how about Job, Solomon, uh, 
I don't know if Solomon's really a good one to put in here, but anyway, uh, money is neither good nor evil. It is neutral and can be used for good or evil. However, the desire to get rich will ensnare those who have it. Loving money is a root of all kinds of evil, which we talked about, 1 Timothy 6.10. Abraham, so let's talk about giving. Uh, Abraham was giving. Job was giving. In fact, Job, in one of the chapters, he gives a litany of, of the things. I mean, um, and I, I'm not going to get these right, but it's like, you know, was there, was there a kid that didn't have shoes that I didn't take care of? Was, was there a woman that needed groceries that I didn't supply? The guy's got money. He's got, he's got a lot of kids to be concerned about. He's got a wife to be concerned about. He's got lots of cattle. He's got lots of donkeys. He's, he's got, I mean, you name it, this guy's got it in the garage, right? And he is acutely aware of those around him and what their needs are. I find that amazing. I've got to believe he had some good administrators take his mind off of having to do everything on the day-to-day -day basis so that he could really take out for the things that are eternally concerning. Uh, that's just my two bits there. Uh, how, about the, how about the widow's mite? She's not rich, but Jesus said she's, she's given more than all the others because she's given all she's had, all she has. Can, any other great example you can think of? I mean... All I'm hearing is my echo this morning. Um, yeah, Alex. In Lazarus? Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, um, <clears throat> I think that this might be, that might be a whole bunch of uh, rationale for another class talking about that, but. Uh, I, I'm uh, not wise enough to figure out how to make that fit into my lesson today. Um, yeah. Right. 
to access the money. I, I, I know. Sure. Money. Or even if people gave her, you know, cloth, you know, talk about Tabitha or Dorcas, uh, which I had in here actually, um, that, you know, she, she gave her talent really to create clothing and, and uh, things for, for people like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Clint. Speaking of what Jane was saying with the headings all be set aside for the form of my Bible, and uh, I'm trying to think of the Micah one and verse eight. Mm -hmm. The warning isn't about their money per se; it's about how they treat you. Right. Yeah. What, what I think <coughs> we're more specifically dealing with with our money is the fact that we're not, we're not treating the people who work for you right. And, and you're, you're, you're using your, your wealth, really using your position of authority to oppress people. And he says, this, this is a problem, and it, and it would be a problem whether you had money or not. And it's, it's the heart of these people that I think we're dealing with in this verse. Yeah. Well, in every circumstance, it's always our yeah. heart. Dana? Right. Um, and I, I want to come back. And we'll hit some of that as we come along. Some of the things I thought about, um, I'm not trying to side, but if we get too far off, I'm not going to be able to get through this. Um, so <clears throat> I've listened to Dave Ramsey a lot, and, and, and lis listening to him, he, he's throwing scriptures out right and left. And so my question to you is uh, is borrowing, especially for consumable items, is that a form of uh, a lack of trust in God? Can I just make a blanket statement like that, or do we kind of need to know the scenario? What? Okay. So... Um, Okay, I've, I don't think I've ever heard that particular spin on it, you know. I can see arguing the other side. I can see playing okay. devil's advocate really easily. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but that's the world, so why would we want to follow the world's example? I mean, unless we... we I mean... Borrowing is always looked at in a bad tense. So, I mean, if you're going to say don't drink because drinking is always looked in a bad tense, why would you not say the same thing for borrow, borrowing money? You know? Yeah, yeah. Wormwood, yeah.
Yeah. You know, it's interesting. So we've had numerous variations and opinions. So I like, I think maybe we should go to Proverbs and say many counselors makes ones wise, right? And I don't know of personally any wiser group of shepherds than what we have right here. I think they've, oh my goodness, if you could have sat in some of the elder deacon meetings and, and just listen to how they just really uh, drill down on deacons saying, listen, I need to have this budget. It needs to be accurate and it needs to be accountable for what we're trying to do here to serve the Lord. Okay, so um, could I solve, uh, could I solve, so here's a question, here's some tests that that they give as questions about uh, if you love money too much. If you find yourself often thinking about money and how to make more money, well, um, when I first got married, I guarantee you, I was thinking a lot about making more money, you know, uh, have, you know, I, and it wasn't just about that, but it was just, uh, just trying to have a career. Okay. I was just a little, little confused. My, my poor wife had a confused guy <coughs> or could I solve this problem by a better budget or one less car, uh, for a while, Cheryl and I had one car. It was not fun, but we made it work. Uh, if a major topic of conversation came up between you and your friends and family uh, and, and family is how to make more money or plans on spending money. Now, I, I always remember, we, we all, my mom always had this joke about robbing a bank at church. You know, um, I don't know why they came up, but it was just kind of a funny little thing. Uh, if you often compare how much you make or the amount of possessions you have with others, either in pride because you are doing well, or in envy because you aren't. It's so funny about this. I remember uh, Arnie and I working together when when Bob and Judy went to China. We would uh, they had a sauna business, and so Arnie and I, I think we installed about five saunas while they were in China. And uh, nothing like working together in a confined space with your brother-in-law. And I'm sure poor Arnie, he that he really thought that. Uh, but we would talk about things like this, you know, and and um, and if you if you knew if you knew Arnie, he could make a penny squeal. OK, so uh, he you know, I'd say, man, you know, do you, do you see someone with this car? Can you believe this house will fit? Because, I mean, if someone find a sauna, they probably have a pretty, pretty substantial home. So we, we were in some very nice homes putting in these saunas. And, uh, you know, we just we just talked about, you know. Uh, I just, he just was very, very conservative with how he addressed money. And I, and I, I just always really appreciate, appreciated that about him. If you are stingy and find it hard to give to God and other people, if you love spending money and find a thrill in buying expensive items because you can, if at work you are scheming for ways to get a promotion or always thinking about changing to a better paying job, so the right view of money is money is only a tool. Uh, James 4, 13 through 17 says that we're not to boast about tomorrow uh, because it's sin if God's not in the equation, right? We, we talked about God needs to be in all the equations. So because of their lust for money, they were going to face judgment from God in the form of miseries, which means uh, <clears throat> things like uh, what miseries do you have if you're... Um, if, you're, if money's a problem for you, creditors calling, um, being over leveraged, lawsuits, lost friends. So money is temporary. It is not lasting. There are earthly materials or riches that will not fade away. Or uh, there, are, there are no earthly materials or riches that will not fade away eventually. So Here's a great test to know if it has eternal value. Will it burn? If it will burn or melt, no eternal value. Now, that doesn't mean that if I help someone out because I had an extra car or I had 
extra clothing or I had extra shoes or just had the extra money to help someone out. Those things will burn, but what remains? It's not a trick question. So I give Linda a coat. She needed a coat. That coat will eventually burn. What doesn't burn? Yeah, okay. You know, some people would have a problem with it, but it was an act of worship. And I think biblically it's an act of worship. So, so in this scenario, does it, make, does it make it to where I need to be very cautious if I see that Ed has four vehicles and he has, I've seen him wear three different designer coats or I've seen whatever. Do I know Ed Hart? Do I know what he's doing for people around him? Do you know what I'm doing for people around me? Do you, you, you know what I'm saying? Back to, back to the last lesson about judging. Ooh, we got to be so careful. People could look at Abraham and say, oh, you, oh, Mr. Abraham, oh, yeah. How about Job? What was Satan's attack? Well, he's got everything. Yeah, you got to hedge around him. He's got everything. Well, Satan got a chance to take it all away, including his health. You know, and I love it about where, you know, I heard Richard Rogers do a lesson on this years ago talking about uh, uh, Job and when, when uh, Satan encountered God wanting to test Job, he says, if you, you know, have you seen Job? He is the A-team. He's my number one man. And through all those tests and trials, he proved to be a righteous man. Yes, Linda. Yeah, yeah. Right. Well, and and maybe maybe you know certainly my my attitude or ha I've changed on many things through the years you know and and um, I want to move on though um, riches tend to make people self reliant and prideful. I'm not saying it always does. It just tends to. If God gives back to you, thank him and generously use them for his service. Now, that could be giving to someone else or that could be planning for your retirement. You know, there, there, Scripture talks about planning ahead, uh, but, I mean, how much is enough, okay? The sin of the rich, the people were mistreating their employees. They pushed them extremely hard, but, and, and they're, they're making assumptions here, but I, I guess it's implied in the text but did not give them a fair salary. Malachi 3, 5, so I will come to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against you, those who defraud laborers on their wages, who oppresses the widows, but do not 
fear me. So do you not think that's probably a text to go to that uh, however we're gonna, how are we going to treat people? Maybe they're our employee. Maybe I'm the, the employee myself. Am I going to treat that person with reverence for God, fear for God? So I think that comes down to our heart situation. Um, here's some, here's some uh, companies. We're not even going to get through all this today. But um, companies that are either Christian or biblically based in some format. Okay, So Marriott is uh, uh, Mormon owned. I mean, so, um, uh, so is JetBlue. Uh, Forever 21. Tyson Foods. Uh, and one of their slogans is provide, uh, they provide compassionate pastoral care uh, of their employees. Alaska Airlines, um, quotes from the Old Testament. They have quotes from the Old Testament on sometimes when they serve their food. And I, I don't know, I didn't find out where that came from. Uh, First Interstate Battery. Um, and I know we have a member that used to be here that actually owns one of their franchises in Indianapolis now. Um, Mary Kay Cosmetics. Timberland, uh, the CEO is Jewish and uh, has a very biblically themed view of things. Hobby Lobby, Chick-fil-A, uh, both closed Sundays. You can go to church and not have to worry about uh, having to be at work. Uh, and as, as a, I've, I've grown up uh, listening to all these podcasts. I've listened to True It, Kathy. I've listened to the Greens talk from Hobby Lobby. They talk about Jesus to every employee. It's unbelievable that... Uh, and you know when they fought the they fought Congress when it came to the uh, the day after abortion pill and all that stuff. I mean they they they've really tried to step in there. I don't know if you've heard about the Bible Museum in Washington D.C. They were the main funders behind the Bible Museum in D.C. Um, the problem is that God has given um, the problem is that God has given the money to you and you are a steward of it. So using it uh, using it. In a, in a wasteful way is, uh, is just not good stewardship. So who is the judge of this? Who makes the call uh, if my third or fourth car is excessive? Uh, who, who makes the call if my 32-inch TV or 55-inch or 65-inch or 80-inch TV is excessive? No takers. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> How can a person excuse himself from owning several mansions when there are homeless people in the world? Uh, and, and I have to put in here, am I becoming judgy? You know, because this is, I'm going off what some of the material given. I think we just got to be really careful when, when we're making judgments. You know, um, I've got to believe that I've, if I got a brother here and, and you know, I, I hear the way they pray, but I know that they've got a, 10,000 square foot home, there might be a reason. Okay? Um, who knows? Maybe, maybe they are super generous to let people, they're, they're using it for all kinds of functions all the time, you know? Um, be care, we've just got to be so careful because we aren't, uh, oh, I was trying to think, $50,000, if you make $50,000 or more household income, I think we're in the top 2% in the world. 100,000 plus, 1% for sure, okay? I see, we all dress pretty well. Yeah. I think you can think about what James is saying and all the stuff you're saying. Is that I think money is kind of an amplifier. If, if, if you're a generous person, you're going to be generous in ways that can move up to 50,000 or more. Right. Yeah, and we won't be able to finish this. I do want to leave you with the last comment on this was uh, getting day for the ready. Getting, uh, you're preparing yourself for the day of, uh, or what was it? Um, preparing yourself for the day of slaughter. So the idea is, so if, if you keep trying to gain money and getting money, you're like, a, you're like a pig or a cow eating, eating, eating. What do, what do you keep feeding a pig or a cow for? So you can slaughter them. So if I'm going to be 
getting more stuff in and in and in. I want it to be more stuff for the kingdom. I want to get fat for the kingdom, not physically, but spiritually, emotionally, mentally. I want to just keep feeding on God's word and get fat on God's word so that that's what God has at the end. Yes, Marshall. I was going to say, James is talking about get, 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 get. He let that law exude because it was get, 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 get. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's a proverb or think about gimme, gimme, gimme. But we're, we're all done. You guys, thank you so much. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry I couldn't get us to the, fun, to the finish line, but we'll, we'll work on it next week.